Good morning. It is Tuesday, September the 5th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm J.D. Walt, and this is your wake-up call. Let's begin this Tuesday with our prayer of consecration. Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Jesus, I belong to you. I lift up my heart to you. I set my mind on you. I fix my eyes on you. I offer my body to you as a living sacrifice. Jesus, we belong to you. And we're praying in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's entry is entitled, Remembering Our Place in This Story. Our text is Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The Word of the Lord. Now consider this. The story of the Acts of the Apostles, on more fully realizing, assumes so much of its readers that is simply untrue. For instance, Acts assumes we know the prophet Joel and King David and Psalm 2, and 16, and 118, and Daniel 7, and the difference between a Sadducee and a Pharisee, and my gosh, on we could go. I got to deal with her. I'm so sorry. I'm going to put a picture of Lucy today on my website. (laughs) You can see this little beast that we love. Well, we, and I include myself in that we, don't really grasp all this massive backstory and its imperative importance. Therefore, we tend to read acts like a teenaged boy watching an action movie. Plot matters, but it's not the most important thing. Origin stories are fine, But if they don't have sufficient special effects, we will quickly begin scrolling TikTok or pick your poison and asking you, what's the point of all these genealogies? How are they relevant to my life today? It's easy to read stories like these without any backstory at all. It would be like starting the Lord of the Rings movies with the last one. The Return of the King. That's about where we come in to the story of Scripture, which is the story of the world and the story of God. The problem is we want to know what this has to do with me. And if that doesn't present itself pretty quickly, we're heading back to Netflix. This is one of the reasons I appreciate The Chosen and the work they are doing to draw us into the story of Jesus. 
in ways that make us long to know more of the backstory and future state. It bears rehearsing here at Acts chapter 4 that we are coming into a six-season series at season 5. Season 1, Creation, the Beginning. Season 2, The Fall, From Eden to Babel. Season 3, Israel, From Abraham to Exile. Season 4, Jesus Messiah, The Great Reversal. Season 5, The Church, The Age of the Outpoured Spirit and the Inbreaking Kingdom of Heaven. And Season 6, The Return of the King and the New Creation. If we are not learning, relearning, and learning again this storyline of Scripture, with all its characters, backstories, and ever-thickening plot, and prophesied resolution, we will invariably turn the story of God into a Christianized self-help manual. The question when reading the Bible is not, how is this relevant to my life, but how is my life becoming relevant to God's story. The application is always deeper immersion into the story. A character makes no sense outside of their larger story. Acts intends to quickly orient us with our character in the story. It is not the disciples or the apostles. They aren't even playing themselves in this story anymore. Watch this. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Our character is Jesus. As we consecrate our lives unto him, offering to him our literal physical bodies, he fills us with his spirit. This becomes a furnace of transformation whereby he forges our lives together into the shape of the cross. Indeed, the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. As it was with Jesus, so it will be with us. And this, my friends, becomes a fiery demonstration of holy love, a burning bush, on fire but not consumed, as we discover Jesus is actually playing our part. This is not my best life. It is a life of pure glory. And this is why it is said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 The Prayer of Transformation Lord Jesus, I am your witness. I receive your righteousness and release my sinfulness. I receive your wholeness and release my brokenness. I receive your fullness and release my emptiness. I receive your peace and release my anxiety. I receive your joy 
and release my despair. I receive your healing and release my sickness. I receive your love and release my selfishness. Yes, Lord, I receive your memory and release my forgetfulness. Come, Holy Spirit, transform my heart, mind, soul, and strength so that my consecration becomes your demonstration, that our lives become your sanctuary. For the glory of God our Father, amen. And the question How are you learning, relearning, and learning again this epic story of God? Are you ready to ask better questions of the story? And how is transformation taking effect in your life at this time? Journal this out today. Your emerging, crucified with Christ self thanks you. And for our hymn today, we're going to sing one of the great anthems of transformation. Love divine, all loves excelling. It's hymn number 88 in our seedbed hymnal, our great Redeemer's praise. We will sing all four verses. With tempo. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, your unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit. Let us find that second rest. Take away our bent to sinning. Alpha and Omega B, end of faith as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return and never Never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing. Serve thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation, perfectly restored in thee, changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. That, my friends, (laughs) is a masterful piece of songwriting. My gosh. Charles Wesley. I like this, come almighty to deliver. That's what we need is deliverance. Some of us, many of us, maybe most of us who've been Christians a long time still need more deliverance. Something that we're stuck in, we can't get ourselves out of. For so many, it's anger. 
we need deliverance. And, and here it is. Let us all thy life receive. Let us all thy life receive. You know, we've been praying this prayer of transformation every day, and people write me and they're like, well, listen, doesn't it make sense that we're going to have to release some things before we can receive some things? And I'm like, you know, that does make sense, but I don't think it's right. You actually have to receive something before you can release something that the Spirit of God works not by replacement, and that's kind of where a lot of us are stuck. We're, we're thinking there's something else I need to do in order for God to do what God needs to do. And we just like, well, what is it? And if it's one thing, and then what's the next thing? And what's the next thing? And the truth is there's no end to that kind of thinking. That's called uh, transactional. It's called instrumental. I call it functional Christianity. What do I have to do to get God to do something? And the answer is nothing. The answer is God has done it, and God is doing it, and we must receive it. And receiving it is not something else. It's like we just say, Jesus, I receive your healing. I receive your righteousness. I release my sinfulness. I receive your joyfulness or your peace or your loving countenance, and I release my anger. I don't know. This is how the Spirit works. You know what? Otherwise, we wouldn't say, while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. He'd still be waiting on us to do something. We'd still be thinking there's something we've got to do to get him to die for us. No, he went first. He always goes first. We don't do something to get him to do something. We respond to what he has done and is doing. <laughs> I know I'm preaching now, maybe to the choir, but I just want you to understand the framework and the structure of that prayer. It's pretty thought through. I mean, Surely I may be wrong, and I am wrong probably about a number of things, but I'm believing I'm getting on the right side of wrong at least. I hope. We must receive before we can release. There must be revelation before there can be response. I'll stop here. Guys, get on the field. Get the seed. It's Tuesday. It's time to sow for a great awakening. I'll be looking for you out there. For The Awakening, I'm J.D. Walt. We hope that today's entry challenged and encouraged you. And thanks for listening to The Wake Up Call, powered by Seedbed. Be sure to share this with a friend. Leave us a rating and subscribe wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. Find out more and join the movement by visiting our website at seedbed.com slash wakeupcall. 